there are actually a lot of different ways you can work between Illustrator and Photoshop and most designers I know typically use both apps. In fact, here I am in Illustrator and quite frankly, I want to take this illustration that I have right here and I want to bring it into Photoshop. Now you might be wondering where that came from. Well, it came from Creative Cloud Market. All I did is typed in chemistry, downloaded this SVG file and then modified it. So I encourage you to do that. But then from there, you can go to edit, copy that particular asset and then jump into Photoshop. So you can see here's my design. In fact, this is where I want to paste that graphic. Now when I select paste, I get four different options. So we have smart object, pixels, path, and then shape layer. Pixels is probably the one you want to use the least, but really I want to paste this as a smart object. When I select OK, paste it in, you can see it right there. I can rotate it, adjust it, whatever I want to do. I might want to put it actually kind of like right down there. And for this graphic, if I decide I want to modify it, because I'm noticing that I kind of need a little bit more on this end, well, to modify it, just double click it because it's a vector smart object. Notice how I can just modify it, just do some quick modifications. As you can see, I can stretch this out if I want to. Just some quick modifications, but when I save this file and I go back into Photoshop, you can see it's updated. So you can see right over here, I've actually extended that out so it can reach the edge and I can get that design the way I want it to look, okay? And I have control over this asset in Photoshop. So even if I wanted to double click and add a layer style like a color overlay, I don't have to necessarily go back into Illustrator to change the color. So I have full control over that. That is a vector smart object. If I take a look at the properties panel, notice how you can convert it to a linked file if you want to, but let's talk about that because to be honest with you, there's a lot of logos that are made in Illustrator because you have that vector flexibility and control. And really that's what I'd want to do here. For this logo file, I'm just saving it. And rather than doing a copy and paste, I'm going to do a file and I can place embedded, which is essentially what this is, or I can place linked. So that's what I'm doing, locating that Illustrator file, placing it in my file. You can see it right here and I can move it maybe up there if I want to and everything looks great. That's pretty straightforward. But what's happening here is this is actually linked right here. You can see the path. So you can click edit contents or you can literally go to that file. Going to that file right here, I can open it up and whether I have Photoshop open or not, whatever the case is, I can open up that file and maybe your brand manager or whoever the brand designer is, they can go ahead and make changes to it if they want to. Okay, so say for instance, the logo was updated and rather than them having to contact you and say, hey, you know what, replace that in all of your PSDs, all you need to do is make sure you have that right logo AI file. So I'm saving it. Notice how the circle is smaller. It's going to be this updated file. But the thing is, is I don't have to do anything when I go into Photoshop. As I go right in there, notice how it is the height of those letters and it's updated across multiple PSDs. So hopefully you can imagine the power you have when it comes to linked smart objects. Now at any time, if you want to embed it, you can always select embed right over here. In fact, if the link is ever broken, you have other options as well. So you can replace the contents of that uh, linked smart object right there and replace it with something else. Okay, but chances are this is probably gonna be the logo that you're gonna use and you're gonna wanna use it across multiple designs, if you will. Well, do you always have to pull it in every time you need it? Well, no, because I'd like to introduce you to Creative Cloud Libraries, which allows you to take whatever you have, textiles, layer styles, colors, and graphics like this one and drag it into your Creative Cloud Library. Uh, you can see it's adding it as logo and it syncs it to Creative Cloud. So now this is going to be available to me everywhere, even in Illustrator. So I can go to the Illustrator Creative Cloud Library panel and I can use this logo if I want to. And case in point, if I open up this other asset right here, I can drag that right in here and there's the logo. So again, you have a lot of flexibility and really a lot of power when it comes to these libraries because these are all my assets that are synced to Creative Cloud and can be used in Photoshop and in Illustrator and other places as well. But what about using assets that were created in Photoshop in Illustrator? In fact, I have this butterfly PSD. I think this would be a nice little asset to use in the Illustrator. So I have this file just saved, pretty straightforward. 
going into Illustrator, locating the asset I want to place it into, file place, selecting that, notice how it is going to be linked, selecting place, there it is, click, there it is, and adjusting the size and placing it, say, right on that M. Now, if at any time I want to change this butterfly, really it's a matter of editing the original. Selecting that, opening it up. If I want to, say for instance, shift the color of this butterfly to a little more red, there it is, going back in, says that it was modified. Do you want to update it? You can see it's updated. And if you want to embed the object, just select embed right there. So working between Photoshop and Illustrator is actually pretty easy, and that not only goes for placing Photoshop files in Illustrator, but also placing other Illustrator files inside of Illustrator, other Photoshop files inside of Photoshop, still giving you all of that flexibility that you'd expect.